Okay, when we test these bowls, I'll lay them down like that. And I can see, see a tiny little, tiny little air gap under there. That's not real bad. Actually, it's pretty good. So, what I do from this point is I will take a, um, a piece of 80 grit sandpaper, if I have one laying around here. Lay it on a very flat surface. Sometimes, if you don't have a uh, a real good flat surface, I mean, you might not want to take it inside, do it on your wife's kitchen uh, counter or anything like that. I mean, I got this nice, solid stainless surface. You can use a piece of glass, um, a mirror, or something. Um, and lay it, lay it down. Run in a circular fashion like that. You'll see that it, that'll that it, that it'll begin to cut the corners down. The center, however, because of the way it folds up, the center won't, won't get cut down. <clears throat> you do it just a couple times, wipe the dust off. You want to take a look and see how far you're getting in. I'm see I'm getting into there and I get into there. So I just got a little ways to go before I'm completely flat. Blow the dust off that guy. I'll do this one more time. I can see that the sandpaper has contacted that and it's contacted this all the way across, barely contacting that. I'm going to call that good. That is as flat as it's going to get. And you don't want to go too far with it because there is a little raised ridge around here that aids in the gasket sealing against the actual carburetor base. You want to try to um, leave as much of that ridge on there as possible. So we're going to call that good on that carburetor. Now, uh, before when I was talking about numbering these, you want to keep each carburetor bowl with each um, with each carburetor body. Um, and the way I do that, you can number the bowl and number the body itself. But what I like to do is once I get this, once I get it all disassembled, I'll take leave two screws out. I'll take all the rest of the parts that we're going to reuse. Um, a lot of the kit, the kits nowadays are coming with uh, with these hinge pins for your float. Some of them, some of them don't. So I have a save your hinge pin, obviously. Save your jets and you've already, before I put this back together, I'm gonna have one of the young guys or get a microscope out, find out what these jetting sizes are, make sure that I've got them written down. We're gonna put uh, put all that stuff down into the bowl, all of your screws. Make sure that you don't get one down inside the well or down inside the well of your, um, of your idle pick up tube. Put the bowl back on there. Two screws, caddy corner in position. With these uh, plastic bodies and with most, you know, with most guys that are unique with mechanics know, always turn it backwards and you'll feel it drop in. Turn it counterclockwise, it'll drop into place. That'll keep you from uh, stripping the threads out in this body. It's very important that you do that. It's in the service manual, actually, too, that you do that. Turn it backwards, you'll feel it drop into position, and then you can go ahead and proceed uh, with your uh, clockwise motion, tightening it up. Okay, you want it not tight, not too loose to where your parts can fall out, but you don't want it too tight to where the fluid can't get in and out of it. Okay. Now, I keep... Um, this uh, picture of uh, engine tuner. This is uh, uh, an Evander Johnson VRP product engine tuner, and uh, the, the, this, this has uh, two functions. Uh, one, one of the functions we use it for all the time is cleaning carburetors. Uh, it, it is an excellent uh, uh, degummer. It takes the any kind of varnish uh, off of the inside of the carburetors, off of the, uh, the the copper and brass pieces in there. You'll really notice that uh, this stuff comes out sparkling clean. It's great. Another thing that this uh, um, that this is used for is you'll notice your um, your uh, primer solenoid has what's called a service valve in it, and that's this little uh, it looks like a tire cap or cap that comes off your tire. But you can take this off, this tire cap off, and there's a fitting 
that you can acquire from your uh, local BRP Evan or Johnson dealer that attaches to that can and while you're running your engine you can open this up and inject uh, or actually that it'll be pushing that uh, when you open it up like that it's injecting fuel into there but you put the uh, you, you put the fitting on there and you can inject engine tuner into your engine while it's running while it's at an idle speed you do it a little bit and lay off and do it a little bit and lay off as you'll hear the motor it'll idle down but it really cleans the carbon out of all you know, all your passages in your motor your your uh, intake ports your exhaust ports it cleans the tops of the pistons off cleans uh cleans it up really really well and it's actually the only what you know quote man, mechanic in a can that that we actually you know do recommend and you know stand by here um, that's the two functions of engine tuner. It comes in uh, these smaller cans. This is a 13 ounce can and then uh, it also comes in uh, gallons and uh, about every year I'll buy a gallon of it and I'll put, so, I'll put a gallon of it in this container here. Um, I think that used to be my iced tea thing or something and I needed something so uh, whatever I sacrificed the iced tea pitcher. If you do that at home I'm sure your wife will enjoy that. She'll probably be really happy with you. You'll get uh, you'll get rave reviews from her. So, plastic body carburetors, I don't recommend soaking more than four hours. You don't want to, uh, you don't want to have your, uh, you don't want to get the, the this is a very, uh, it, it, it's a very, uh, very strong cleaner. Um, they recommend from the factory that, you know, don't soak it too long. I'll soak them about four hours. Sometimes I'll get busy. They might sit in there a little bit longer than that. But uh, four hours is generally, generally, um, as long as I'll keep them in there. The metal body carburetors, the aluminum carburetors, I'll leave them in there a little bit longer because, um, because they're a little stronger, you know. But the, from what they, the, uh, the bodies of, of these are actually covered because aluminum is porous. This is cast aluminum, and it is actually porous. I know you, you know, it, it, it's it's hard to think that uh, it's going to be that porous to where it would uh, create running problems. However, there's a there's a coating on this, and they say that if you soak it, uh, if you soak a carburetor too long, that it can damage the outer coating on this and um, add to a a porous a, a porous characteristics in the carburetor which you don't want so uh, you know four hours on the plastic one six to eight hours on the on the aluminum one. Okay. okay now to our throttle body some of these are torque screws and some of them are allen screws these appear to be allen screws which is kind of odd the newer ones the newer models usually have a um, Torque screw, and this one would be a 964th Allen that should memory serves me. Yes, 964th Allen key fits that. Now, for you guys that are um, that are doing uh, that, just doing your own carburetor rebuild, this is very important that you do this. You've taken these off; you haven't disturbed these screws at all. Take your key and put it into position. You can see it's at the 12 o'clock position. We count our turns inward, and we clockwise turns in, and we count how many turns it takes to seat the screw. That way we know how many turns to turn it out. Once you're done seating the screw, and you've counted the turns, write that down. Five turns, six turns, whatever. Then, when you go to reassemble this, you tighten your screw all the way in until it seats, and you back it out that same number of turns. And more than likely, your idle... Um, will be right around where it's supposed to be. You might have to uh, might have to mess with it a little bit, but um, probably not much. Okay, so this one is half one, half two, half three, half four, half five, half six, half six and a half turns. Okay. Good old Gary. This motor is going to be a complete rebuild, so I'm going to go with what they usually have is start these at about like five and three quarter turns. This one's six and a half, which is, you know, falls into um, for when a motor is getting a little bit older, sometimes, it, you know, the displacement will grow in it as it breaks in. And uh, and you do have to increase the fuel supply a little bit. 
in order to make it idle, right? So this one's out six and a half turns. I think it probably says five and three quarters or six turns in the book, but we're going to mark this one at six and a half turns. And um, for, for you guys doing one that's not getting a block rebuild, that you'll know to, that that's where you need to set it at. Go through the rest of these and do those the exact same way. Um, however, this was getting a block rebuild, so when I put when I put this back together, I'm going to set all these at a predisposed uh, a predisposed uh, number of turns out. I've got I'm going to have some holes that are um, that are 20 over and some holes that are standard. I'll probably my standard holes. I'll probably do exactly what it calls in the book. My uh, holes that have, uh, my cylinders, as I don't call holes, that have been bored out, I'm going to give them a little bit more because there's a little bit more fuel or a little bit more air being drawn into the cylinder. So it's going to require a little bit more fuel for a proper mixture. You should pull these out, you want to inspect them. You want to make sure that no one's tightened them down too far because that'll put a, that'll pull a little notch in it. Um, it should make a, you know, a very smooth taper to the end. Shouldn't be bent or uh, otherwise deformed. These all look pretty good. If they are replaced, if they are, if there is any kind of deformations in them.